Hey guys, Ecom here, and I want to talk to you a little bit about stropping. I've had the question come up a few times. Uh, some of you are unfamiliar with stropping, or what it is, or what it does. Uh, some of the techniques involved into proper sh uh, stropping. Uh, where to get a strop, uh, what strop I recommend, and, and so on. Now, I guess we'll start with the basics. Stropping is essentially uh, fine-tuning your edge. Now, you can see the edge is pretty polished already on this Spyderco Manix. But, let's say I just took this off the sharpening stones and it's pretty sharp, I can cut computer paper with it all day long, might, be even, uh, might even be able to shave with it. Uh, but to take it to that next level, to get it really razor sharp, you want to strop it. Now when you come off the stones, essentially what you're going to have are microscopic little peaks and valleys from the scratch marks that the stones will leave. You won't be able to see it with your naked eye. Uh, you could on a really rough grit, but stropping will smooth those peaks and valleys out to give you a nice keen edge. Uh, stropping is also useful for maintenance. Let's say you were at work today and you cut up a box, you're going to have little microscopic abrasions and maybe a tiny little roll or a chip or something. Uh, when you come home and you strop it after work, after you did some cutting with it, it'll help make your edge last longer before you need to completely resharpen. Okay, now essentially most strops are a piece of leather. In this case it's over a hard backing it's a piece of wood and it's loaded with a compound, a metal polishing compound. There, not all compounds are created equal uh, but this is kind of a, a medium compound. You don't want to go as fine as a jeweler's ruse if you're going to make one yourself or something like that. But uh, Home Depot has the compounds. They come in bricks like this. This is uh, the white. Uh, typically they're color coded. I like the white and the green. This strop, I'll just tell you now, I love it. I just picked it up the other day. It's the Strop Lock by Knives Plus, and it comes preloaded with compounds. So if you want to take some of the guesswork out, do yourself a favor, go to Knives Plus and order one of these. They're 25 bucks. Uh, which is a great price for a strop. Uh, most strops go from the $25 to $40 range, usually. Another great one is, oh, come on, focus. There we go. Stropman.com. This is their uh, HD strop, I believe. Now you have the choice of two sides with this, the fine and the coarse. I used this one for a very, very long time, and it served me well. But I just picked up this one, and... Uh, doesn't hurt to have a second one. I use them all the time. Okay, but enough about that. Let's get into the technique. Now, for stropping, you do not want to put a ton of pressure in. So don't bury the knife into the strop. Don't put any pressure. It's, you're not sharpening on a stone. You're just very finely polishing the edge. So just the weight of the knife should be sufficient. Now, what you want to do is, let me see, get you on an angle where you can see it. I like to start tip to heel. So I'll take the stroke from the tip and I'll work it up to the heel like that. Okay, but you want to use the entire length of the strop. So let me see if I can get you guys in frame here. Oh. Just like that, all the way up. And then come back in the reverse direction. Just the weight of the knife. Now, in order to find your angle, I know a lot of guys have, uh, this is a question, or a lot of you guys have trouble with it, I was no different. But, to find the angle, you can lay your knife flat, just like that. Let's see, get you guys to see it. And you could start rolling it up towards the edge, and you should be able to feel it stop. I just felt it right about there. It's, you won't, it's not a big feeling you're going to feel, but it should feel different right about there. Now, if you're unsure of the angle, you're better off starting too shallow. So, we'll go back to this view again. You're better off starting too shallow. If you start off way steep like this, you're going to dull it. This is abrasive at the end of the day, so if you're starting off too steep, you're going to dull it. That's no good. If you start off too shallow, uh, the worst thing you're going to do is polish up the edge 
the shoulder of the, the cutting edge, uh, which isn't the end of the world. And you're not putting a ton of pressure, so you're not going to really do any damage. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Again, just like anything else, you want to practice, get a knife that uh, uh, maybe you're not too fond of, or you're not worried about just scratching it up, uh, and practice on that. Get an old knife out of the kitchen or something. But all it takes, guys, is maybe 10 strokes each direction, and then I like to finish up with a little heel to tip, just like that, heel to tip. That's all it takes. Now what you can do is as you're doing this, you can do five strokes aside and then take a piece of foam book paper or a piece of paper and test it out. See if it's improving. If it's getting worse, your angle's too steep. If it's improving, you're doing right. You're doing it right. You keep going the way you're going and you'll get to that super fine cutting edge. If you're not seeing any difference, maybe you're laying it too flat. At that point, you want to check to see if you're polishing right here, in the middle of my finger, right where the main bevel meets the cutting edge. That's the shoulder right there. You might be polishing that. Okay. Now, same thing goes for big knives. <laughs> this is a, let me see if I can zoom out. It's just a tiny bit here. <laughs> well, I wasn't kidding about a tiny bit. You got a big old machete here. It's the same concept. I'm going to start on the tip and work my way. Oh, I'm bumping into this one. Okay, we'll start off on the tip, work my way, just the weight of the knife, all the way back to the cutting edge. See? Big knife, small knife, doesn't matter. Stropping will always give you some kind of benefit if you do it correctly. So, hope this helps, guys. Oh, actually, before, before I run, one quick tip, if you go with like the strop man strop or most strops don't come preloaded with compound like this one does. So you're going to have to add the compound yourself. It comes in these like uh, little blocks. Now what you want, as you can see here, this one's been to, uh, <laughs> this one's seen better days. Uh, I've used it a ton over the years and it's starting to get old and show its age. But anyway. Uh, you want this fuzz that uh, the softer side of the leather, the rough side I guess, I'm not sure which side it is, but the fuzzy side we'll call it. Uh, so when you put your compound on do not bury the fuzzy side. Okay? If it has a sheen like this let me see, I can get you guys to see it. See how it's got a shine through? There you go, now you can see it. This is way too much compound. This is now pretty much turned into a brick of compound. There's no fuzz coming up through this. Uh, this needs to be taken care of, and I'll go over that in a maintenance video. Uh, but, here, I'll just show you guys how to do it. When you add compound, you're going to take it and draw on it like a crown. That's it. That's all it takes. Do not add it every single time. Uh, maybe once a month you want to add a little fresh compound. Okay, I'll go over that more in depth in the strop maintenance video. But if you want to take some of the guesswork out, like I said, go to these guys right here and pick one up. Okay, excellent little strop. This one's also excellent. Uh, they're both handmade. Can't go wrong with either one. Alright guys, I'll catch you on the next one.